he was that much of a movie star at that time. Um, but in amongst all that, we found a letter to Bill Hartnell from Peter Cushing, um, but long predating Doctor Who, it was like 1950, congratulating him on a performance in a play that Cushing had been in the audience to see Hartnell. So it's a lo- it was a lovely, they're holding a piece of paper, you know, it's like a slight tremble if you're a fan of these things. Stuff like that is like, you know, kind of golden, you know, yeah. the Ark of the Covenant sort of thing, you know, it's saturating. But it was, you get that sense of history. And also the beautiful scrapbooks with photographs of Bill Hartnell at um, some air shows. You, should, you probably saw if you've seen the video or sort of the TV programme. We had clips that we managed to find. Um, we placed an ad in local papers in the areas where we knew the air shows had happened. And we've got three people came forward with the late film films. So you can see Cushing going around this various air show, uh, one particular air show. And the scrapbook that he had was given to him as a presentation and all the amazing things that they'd done. Uh, you know, because the war wasn't that long ago. <laughs> in those days, it's just difficult for us to judge all these years later. So, um, but, you know, it's, it's fascinating to see what went on display, you know. Um, Again, back to film, the attempt to redirect the comedy, especially with Roy Castle, and Ian's much more of a bumbling, kind of laughable figure rather than the kind of hero that he was portrayed to be. And again, was that the content to go to the child, more kind of children's market? Or I think so. Castle, <coughs> <laughs> I mean, again, he would have been a very popular entertainer, family entertainer at that time. Um, and similarly with um, Bernard Cribbins, who was in the second film, I mean, he had his own TV show at the time, but the Cribbins did. In fact, we've, we found reference that the Dalek turned up in the Cribbins show at one point, but we've never been able to find the clip, sadly, because they've thrown a lot of films away. So I think they just made the sensible 20 minutes is the first problem, so a lot of, lot of the subtleties have to go out the window. Mind you, if you watch all seven episodes at one sitting, you find there's sort of slow bits and some repetition, but they weren't designed to be viewed that way. I think a lot of people, when they get the DVDs, they forget that. But some people I have spoken to say, oh, when they get the DVDs of the TV series, they sit down and only watch one episode per night. You know, one episode a week might actually be mm-hmm. can't contain his own budget. On <coughs> but um, maybe that's a better way to view those. But the film's glorious in one sitting, the family entertainment, you can get the dose of the Daleks in the most readily used uh, available form. Where do you think the film sits in the doctrine? I hate the word of canon. You know, is it something to be looked at and just kind of a novelty? I think they played an important part in the history of the program. I think they played an important part in the history of Terry Nation's bank account. <laughs> 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 I think probably, uh, they probably did help secure all kinds of merchandising deals. Um, and also, it's interesting to come across them when I first saw what they were at that time. I've probably been a bit too young when they first came out. So we've got some very young people here today. It'll be interesting to see what the young man over there makes of uh, seeing the film for the first time. Can we just do a straw I just wondered how many people really gave the recent Dalek episode on television their approval? How many people liked the Dalek episode? Oh, well, there you go. So we're, all, we're all amongst Dalek fans here. Yeah. So, uh, how many, anybody didn't like the recent Dalek episode for any reason? Oh, dear. Oh, right. Well, I'll just start with you, young lady. What's your name and how old are you? Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like because what I wanted more Dalek. Mm. Oh, I could live with one Dalek. And two, I don't like my Daleks all cuddly. I don't think it was cuddly. It didn't start off cuddly. I think it became right. cuddly. What's interesting about the new series is that I feel like Doctor Who is like a dark ball. Every, every segment in the dark ball has been hit by one Dalek. Yeah. Well, they should leave. One coming up with um, Anne Robinson was, um, as well. Now, there was a girl who used to do Big, um, big Breakfast on... Channel 4, Tanya Byron, does like that ring a bell, you know? Was that she was introducing Chris? something, this is a couple of years back before the Big Breakfast unfolded. She was talking about something and they did a camera shot where they spun up to the ceiling and spun round and came back down again. And she went, oh, Dizzy Daleks. <laughs> I thought, good God, how can she possibly remember <laughs> that? Because, I mean, I can only remember it from the sort of audio recording. We just had pirate audio recordings going around 25 years ago. Now it's all out on... It, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. They had to each other and swap them and that. Anyway, so to be able to remember a moment like that, from, from 1967 was extraordinary. Unless I wondered, because she didn't look to me as if she was old enough to have remembered it at the time. Down the generations that the mum had picked it 
up or something and abused it. But it seems so incongruous to hear it just maybe two or three years ago. We've got five minutes. Bear in mind that Kevin just been plucked out of his seat and plumped down here. Has anybody got any questions about the Hitchhiker's Guide? Hello. Hi there. Just one thing. I read recently about um, the movie Daleks appearing originally at the Cannes Film Festival. Yes. And that not all of them returned. <laughs> I think one of them probably opened a little restaurant. In the <laughs> 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 that answers my question perfectly. I just don't know if you knew any more about where they went to. Or Do you know, we tried very hard because I figured there must be some newsreel footage of the time. And, and um, I would love to see some actual footage of, of the Daleks at Cannes going along across there. It would be, I mean, the, the, apparently they were driven down on the back of a lorry. And I don't know whether they were covered with a top ball in or what, but I mean, they look a bit better than the ones that did, which I think they've made available as, as PDFs on uh, a couple of the DVDs. Um, there's, um, the, on one of these, there was photographs of the Daleks up on their lorry, you know, with the big hotel behind them and everything. And in that sales brochure, the really fascinating picture, was a small little postage stamp sized black and white photo, very high contrast, of John Lennon with a Dalek behind him. Now I would love to see a decent quality copy of that photo. And I also wonder whether anybody said uh, 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 at that time he was being interviewed for an American documentary. So one wonders whether there's some footage out there somewhere of John Lennon with a Dalek gliding behind him. There's a lovely bit you must watch out for if you've never spotted it before in, in the first film, when two Daleks are coming towards camera and there's a bit of a discussion going on between them. You know they're drone on, it's a bit slow, isn't it? Dalek dialogue is not the most riveting. Um, but one Dalek, will you watch for it? One Dalek passes in the background. He literally goes behind the two in the movie spotted it. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, so I would love to see if there's any newsreel footage from the South of France, it would be wonderful. There, there, um, there's a piece of film of the Daleks at the Boys and Girls exhibition of Christmas 64, where uh, Caroline Falls was one of the guests there. There are photographs of her shaking hands with the Black Dalek, and I actually met a guy who was inside that Black Dalek. Strangely enough, total coincidence, while we were making Dalek Mania, um, I went down to um, the production company and stayed down there for the week when we were editing, and the local pub landlord said, that was me! <laughs> and he told me the whole bit. I didn't have to tell him anything about it, so it was obviously genuine. He knew all about this, um, you know, have you probably heard about the brain train? Well, Movie Town have actually got the newsroom footage of that, of the brain train, which was a kind of robotic uh, wheeled vehicle that carried the kids through the exhibition. And they went through an open area that was decorated up to be like the Dalek City, very cursory, so they use that clear. Probably it cost so much money to... Uh, to pay movie time to clear it. And there's various other bits of film around. There's um, some Pathé newsreels as well, uh, homemade Dalek, the earliest of which was um, within weeks of the very first Dalek story being made. There was uh, a radio-controlled Dalek about this bit, very sort of rust design, very primitive, but undeniably a Dalek, um, <laughs> and going around the streets of Coventry selling the rag mag <laughs> made by the local university. And that was in early 64. So again, extraordinary. The popularity was that enormous. Right? It's very hard to explain. My son's here, Liam, who um, it, it, for a long time was the only kid in his school that knew what a Dalek was. And now all his mates, of course, have seen it on the telly. And hopefully we're going to see a few more soon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the room is a minute, yeah. Are we nearly ready? All good. That's it. Well, I, I was asked to fill in for, for Jenny Linden, who I understand is still coming. Um, we hope. Yeah. Um, but I, sadly, they couldn't find me a beat.